Hi, I'm Jeremy Cowan from IOT Now, and welcome to another of our quickfire videos, where this time I'm trying to find my way around location tracking. And to do that, I'm joined by Peter Vanden Houten, who is Director of Pre-Sales Engineering at Core. He's going to tell us a bit about how to track and manage things in a broad range of industries. Peter, welcome. Morning, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. It's, it's great to have you here. Um, Location data is necessary, obviously, in a wide variety of industries. But do you think that the value of location data for innovation and operations, compliance and security has really fully been understood? Uh, I, th I think the short answer would be no. I mean, uh, relatively speaking, um, that, that process and that exploration is only really just, just starting to happen. Uh, if we consider... The, um, the origins of location data, and then specifically GPS, it's, it's been available for civilian use cases since 1998. And we haven't really significantly moved the needle beyond use cases like fleet management and, and vehicle navigation uh, and asset tracking. Um, but that's, I'd say in the last sort of five years, that's, that's really started to change, and probably for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first being the, the processing of that location data has changed. So if we think about the advancement of cloud computing and edge computing, um, that's really contributed to location data being able to be processed much quicker. And the second reason would probably be around, you know, the evolution of our networks and, and specifically cellular networks. So we can now transmit, process and analyze that data and make, uh, you know, make meaningful use of that data um, much, much quicker. And that's opened up a whole raft of uh, use cases. Yeah. Personal safety and security alarm systems have been around for a while, but do you think that the system's limitations uh, have been eliminated by IoT-enabled location tracking, or are we still some way off? I, I would say eliminated to some degree. Um, if if we consider, and I'll, I'll, I'll reference the consumer space here, you know, the the um, the innovation that's taking place when we look at connected smart home systems. Um, so if you consider your standard door lock at the moment, you lock your doors, you leave your house, and 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 that's it. Um, you'd only really know of something happening when you um, when you return home. So we've now got smart door locks, connected smart door locks, which um, will proactively uh, lock themselves when you leave the geofence of your property um, and alert you proactively if if you know anyone tries to tamper uh, with, with with that door lock. But that's also you know when we talk about IoT and things being interconnected, you know that that might link into your CCTV system or your your video doorbell, for example. So I, I wouldn't say we're completely there. I think we're, we've we've started on that journey, um, but uh, um, you know things are in flight certainly. There's been a lot of talk about things like stolen vehicle recovery uh, and uh, people tracking uh, solutions. Uh, are we looking at a time when these can actually contribute significantly to society's safety? I, I'd say absolutely. Um, so if you consider you know, vehicle theft, it's not simply about losing your, your vehicle. There's, there's a financial and there's an emotional consequence there, and not only to the, to the victim, um, but also potentially to other people and other, uh, other businesses. So if you think about a vehicle theft, um, there's often a follow on crime. So that could be a kidnapping, it could be a robbery or something like that that affects someone other than the, you know, the, the owner of the vehicle. And by employing systems like stolen vehicle recovery to track rapidly exactly where that vehicle is um, uh, and where the, the, the location of the perpetrator is, um, there's some obvious benefits there. I mean, the, the, the first is that the owner of the vehicle gets their vehicle back. So um, there's no the, the, there's no worry of increased insurance premiums, uh, as an example. Um, but in, in a lot of cases, the, the, the thief, it's, you know, he or hers is uh, um, apprehended as well, which means that you 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 prevent that follow on crime from happening. Um, and and ultimately, it serves as a, a deterrent for um for, for re offences. And obviously, IoT systems, IoT enabled systems can call uh, the emergency services for help. So I guess that's another iteration, another development. Um, what do you think comes next? I, I think when we look at it from a personal safety point of view, um, a lot of the a lot of the connected solutions that we have at the moment are pretty reactive. Uh, and what I mean by that is, um, you have to initiate something when something happens to you. Uh, if we consider, say, dementia patients, for example, being able to proactively track their location and map that to uh, certain behavioural patterns. So 
if 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 your your your, your granny or your granddad starts moving in the middle of the night and, and walking outside of a particular geofence, you know that they shouldn't be doing that at that that you know at, at that time of night. You can take um, proactive measures to to yeah to make sure you address that situation. So I, I think that's really the advancement. It's it's a it's it's a move from having these as reactive solutions that someone needs to initiate something to something you know that is based more on predictive analysis. Peter, that's been a whirlwind tour uh, around location tracking. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, this has been another quick fire video from IoT Now, and we look forward to seeing you again at our next one. Bye.